Hello and welcome to this industry forum overview of the new aerospace standard AS13003. This standard was written by the Aerospace Engine Supplier Quality Committee, AESQ. It forms part of a number of interlinked quality standards which supports the AESQ strategy to create a series of related quality standards for use within the aerospace engine supply chain. It is also expected that the standard will be adopted by aerospace sector supply chains outside of aero engine supply. The purpose of AS13003 is to define the application of appropriate measurement system analysis tools and the acceptance criteria to be applied by aero engine manufacturers supply chain. It also provides guidance on the efficiency of application or read across and mitigation strategies of non-capable measurement systems. AS13003 was published to gain agreement on measurement system analysis acceptance criteria. The aerospace industry is highly reliant on the inspection and measurement of parts and assemblies to ensure that they meet drawing requirements. Ensuring that the measurement systems are capable and repeatable is vital to the inspection process. The purpose of MSA is to identify the total variation present in the measurement system so that actions can be taken to effectively control it and ensure repeatable and accurate measurements. So when considering measurement systems, we have to consider the measurement device, the people making the measurements, the parts to be measured and the environment. MSA studies should be conducted to represent the real world as much as possible. For example, the range of appraisers, parts that cover the whole specification, standardized measurement methods, and the normal working environment. When we make a decision about whether a component is good or bad, we have three opportunities to make a wrong decision. Only when the measurement system variation overlaps the system uh, variation and the specification limits, then we have problems. So if we consider the situations uh, as displayed, so in situation one, bad parts will always be called bad. In situation three, good parts will always be called good. But in two situations around the lower specification limit and the upper specification limit, if our measurement system variation overlaps with our specification limits, then there's a possibility of wrong decisions being made. By understanding where the zone of uncertainty exists, we are better able to make decisions regarding the results of the measurements we make. MSA helps us to better understand the size and the location of the zone of uncertainty. Within AS13003, there is guidance on when MSA is required. The standard gives us 10 instances where an MSA study might be required or an MSA study should be reviewed. I'm not going to go into detail on these. However, if you freeze this, you should be able to read the slide and glean the necessary detail. When dealing with measurement, we have two types of data that we have to do, um, manage. First type of data is called variable or continuous data, and it may take on any value within a finite or infinite interval depending on the resolution of the measurement system used to capture that value. In simple terms, if you stand on your bathroom scales in the morning and weigh yourself, the figure that the scales returns to you is variable data. 
you can stand on the scales a number of times over a number of weeks and it will return slightly different values every time. So on the graphic, we're demonstrating here 20 different parts with 20 different measurement results. When we consider variation within measurement systems, there's two main sources of variation. We can group these into what is known as location and spread. Both sources and types of variation should be considered when determining measurement system performance. So when we consider locational variation, we consider accuracy, bias, stability, and linearity. And when we consider spread variation, we consider precision, repeatability, and reproducibility. So some of the key factors that we deal with are known as R and R, which stands for repeatability and reproducibility. So repeatability is the ability of a measurement system to give the same result when measuring the same feature multiple times using the same elements of the system. We quite often call this within system variation and sometimes called precision. It's sometimes referred to as equipment variation or EV. Reproducibility is the ability of the measurement system to give the same result when elements of the system, such as the operator or the envir environment, are changed. This is called between systems variation and also sometimes referred to as appraiser variation or AV. When we consider variation, we need to consider that these sources of repeatability and reproducibility combine. So let's consider this situation. We're making a measurement study, and the first part of variation we consider comes from the equipment. This is equipment variation or repeatability. We then need to consider the variation coming from the appraisers, or AV. We can now consider gauge R and R, which is repeatability and reproducibility. We have a third source of variation, which comes from the parts. And then finally, having considered equipment variation, appraiser variation, and part variation, we can finally consider the total variation within the measurement system. Once we know the total variation within the measurement system, we can apportion a percentage against the equipment, a percentage against the appraiser, and a percentage against the parts. Another type of data that we need to manage when we make measurements is attribute data. Attribute data is a qualitative measure of a property that is of interest. That may, may be binary, so simply pass, fail, good, bad, or ordinal if the values can be ranked, for instance, low, medium, and high. Attribute agreement studies are important where there is operator interaction. Examples would be physical, does the gauge fit? is the item present, or interpretational, surface free from blemishes, how deep is a scratch, the interpretation of an x-ray, does a color match a master, for example. If we consider visual inspection, then it is possible to do a measurement system analysis. In this instance, an assembly shop had a high number of escapes due to a lock wire being missing. No matter how much training was conducted, escapes continued as a problem. It was to try, decided to try and better understand why missing lock wires were not being detected. The organization took a number of examples of units with lock wire present and not present. They repeated a study with four different appraisers. 
And as we can see for this graphic, if we look out for the blue dot, then Sonia was achieving a score of around about 88%. Uh, Bev, just short of 70%. Iris, about 65%. And Jane, about 65%. So on the left-hand side, what we can see is that the appraisers did not agree with each other. And also, for example, Sonia, with an only an 88% uh, result, she only agreed with herself 88% of the time, which meant that 12% of the time, Sonia did not agree with herself. When we look at their performance against the standard, and when we consider the standard, this is where the customer or the technical authority has set which parts were good or bad, then we can see that Sonia's performance now drops to about 75%. So what this is telling us is that Sonia did not agree with herself 100% of the time, and she did also did not agree with the technical authority 100% of the time. Action was taken to improve performance. The standard about what was good was better defined and communicated. A visual display of samples of acceptable and unacceptable, so a reference board was created demonstrating the subtle differences between acceptable and unacceptable. The operators were retrained in the acceptance standard and there was improved lighting in the area. The study was then repeated. What we can now see is that Jane Sonia agree with themselves 100%. And in this instance, Andy was added to the study. He was a technical expert, so he was used as a benchmark. But more importantly, the appraisers also agreed with the standard. So when we consider that visual inspection should be a straightforward activity whenever we are making uh, decisions based on people interpreting situations, we can gain variation. Within the field of MSA, it's these types of decisions that are often not considered. So to summarize then, measurement system analysis is a statistical study of the variation present in a measurement system. Variable studies are conducted when the features are being measured with a device that returns a definitive value. Attribute studies are conducted simply to determine if the feature is good or bad, or when a de definitive value is not required. By understanding the variation present in the measurement system, we can determine the variation in the present in the features being measured. By understanding the variation present in the features being measured, we are able to compare this variation with the specification and the tolerance attached to the feature, and hence decide which features are conforming and non-conforming. AS 13003, a new aerospace standard created by the EA, AESQ with the target of creating a common aerospace sector approach for measurement system analysis. For further information on AS 13003, please contact Industry Forum. Thank you.